Hey there, Kurt here with Music and Arts, talking about setting up a home studio for a horn player. Today, five o'clock Eastern time, hope everybody's day is going good. Everybody's staying inside, staying safe, staying healthy. It's always a, an interesting time for a musician, a lot of people out there struggling. So definitely if you get a chance to listen to some live streams, buy some albums, check out some live shows via Facebook, a lot of great stuff going on and uh, a lot of opportunities to give back to those artists that have been supportive of your communities. So I wanna hear, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, being a horn player and setting up your home studio. Uh, I'm a trombone player myself, and I've always been jealous of those guitar players who've got all this great gear and making all these great sounds, great recordings, and realize that as a horn player, I can actually do a lot of that myself as well. And it doesn't take that much equipment, a lot of it, probably already have in terms of a laptop. Uh, it really um, is incredibly accessible today. Uh, and so I wanna talk you through just a little bit of some of the basics, some of the pieces and parts of what makes that tick uh, from a uh, recording standpoint. Now keep in mind, uh, the goal here is not to give you a how-to on how to make studio quality albums. Uh, that's a, a much different, <laughs> much different couple of sessions, but the goal is, to give you some ideas of how you can create your own music, how you can share your music, how you can collaborate with others, uh, how you can basically take your music uh, and have a great time recording it, even if it's at a, as a hobbyist, as a, uh, you know, a, a student in high school, you wanna collaborate with your friends, lots of great things you can do. So the goal of what we're gonna talk about here today uh, is just a little bit about how to get started. What are some of the pieces and parts? If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and we'll be sure to uh, uh, address any of those as they come up. Uh, and keep in mind, some of the, the recommendations for products are what I use, what I like to use, what are some of my favorites, um, but there is no right and wrong answer. Everybody's scenario is different. Everybody uh, has a different computer. Everybody has different needs and tastes and budgets. Uh, so what works for me doesn't necessarily have to be what works for you. Um, so. Without any further ado, the first piece uh, that I always like to talk about when I'm talking about your home recording setup is obviously the computer. So today, this is all computer-based. Uh, in the old days, when I was in high school, we were doing four-track tape recording, and you put the little cassette in the tape thing, and you recorded three tracks, and then you bounced them to the fourth track, and then you got three more tracks, and you bounced them to another track, and it created a lot of noise, and it was just uh, just no fun at all once you got beyond about four tracks. So all this is now computer-based. Uh, and the, the good news is just about any laptop or PC or desktop computer uh, made within the last six to eight years will work. I use a, a trusty MacBook Pro. Uh, this uh, workhorse is now about eight years old, which in uh, Mac age is quite a while. Um, so eight years old. Uh, but doing a great job. I've kind of taken everything else off of it except just the music stuff and use a different computer for all of my uh, personal business. Um, but eight-year-old MacBook Pro, doing great. Um, a PC, um, lots of the software works really well for Mac. So if somebody was starting out from scratch, I'd say try to stick within the, the Apple ecosystem. A lot of the product is real plug and play, um, but a basic desktop PC will work real well. Uh, an iMac is a great choice uh, if you have a family computer that can do some of both. Uh, or if you're just uh, kind of starting out, you can find a used MacBook Pro uh, for six, seven, eight hundred bucks um, as a starting point. So the first kind of piece to do the recording is some recording software. And the great news is you can spend zero getting recording software. A lot of it's free for download. Or you can spend, uh, what, eight, nine hundred thousand bucks on a whole Pro Tools rig. Uh, kind of anywhere in between. What I'd recommend is actually um, with the software, sticking with one of the software packages that'll come in a bundle with the interface. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But the great part about the, the software, and, and even like the $99 version, will come with a lot of the sounds that you need. So in today's musical world, all of the sounds now come from the computer. You don't need a bunch of external gear, uh, powering different synth sounds and piano sounds plugins, it's all done inside the computer, which means uh, you're very self-contained and spending a little bit of money to get the sounds built into the computer is actually really money well spent. A lot of that can come in packages uh, with the interface. So 
even uh, like the $99 version of Studio One. So I use a program by Personas called Studio One and the $99 version comes with a lot of great, great keyboard sounds, perfect for getting yourself started. Um, you'll hear the term uh, DAW or D-A-W referred to a lot. So as a, as a horn player, I'm not real familiar with all of these terms. So it took me a little bit of, little bit of research to understand all the pieces and parts. D-A-W stands for Digital Audio Workstation. Kind of a fancy name for your laptop with a bunch of sounds in it now. Uh, and lots of, different, lots of different great software out there. Um, you'll find reviews, you know, thousands and thousands of reviews about it. Find what you like, download a trial version, check out some stuff, you can do notation as well. Um, but once you get, kind of decide along the lane that you're gonna go, um, look for one of the software packages that'll come with the interface. Again, we'll talk about that in just a second as a way to kind of bundle value some of your products. So once you've got your laptop set up, we'll kind of walk through the signal chain all the way to the end. You've got your software set up. Uh, the next thing you need is some sort of input device. And if you're not a great keyboard player, you still need something to input some chords, maybe some bass parts, maybe some drum parts. And you can do any number of things. Um, I actually love this little guy. It's a little Akai uh, 25 note keyboard. It's all black, kind of tricked out. They make one that's white, one that's red. Uh, and it's perfect, it sits on the desk, plugs in via USB port. Uh, really easy just to input some simple notes, simple bass lines, simple chords sits right next to the laptop on my desk. Um, really, really useful. If I want to plunk out some drum patterns, it's got pads on the top of it. Uh, and I think these things sell for like 99 bucks. Uh, really, really cool product. Uh, really useful and a great kind of um, compact setup. Of course, if you've got a bigger keyboard, that's great too. If you've got an older keyboard that uses MIDI uh, as the interface instead of USB, there are also lots of ways you can connect that uh, into there to get the MIDI data into your computer system. You can also uh, do some other things in terms of an input device. I also have one of these. This is a Novation launch pad. And it's basically a grid controller that I can trigger different loops and patterns from. Um, like one channel might be drums and I'll have different drum patterns and one channel might be bass and I can have different bass patterns. And this is really useful for composing songs and using loops where I don't necessarily have the guitar chops to play some cool stuff, but I can assign different guitar loops that I've downloaded to different channels here and then trigger them individually. We'll talk about some of this in a subsequent session, but this works actually great as an input device uh, so that I can trigger my music, uh, something that I can play along when I'm practicing trombone, something to make kind of my daily practice a little bit more interesting. Uh, so the pad controller, USB keyboard. If you're a wind player, Akai makes a really cool product, uh, uh, an iwi, uh, electronic wind instrument that you can play with basically a saxophone or recorder fingerings that will record USB into your computer, another way to do that. If you're a drummer, you can have an electric drum kit. You can trigger sounds from your drums, record that into your computer. So that's kind of the, the hub of everything, the laptop. So once you've got your, your controller, your notes in the computer, the, the input device, the next thing you need um, if you're a horn player like me, you want to record yourself, right? Recording these keyboard parts, bass parts, lots of fun, drum parts. I want to record myself. And so I need some sort of audio interface. There we go. Uh, and what that does is take the sound from your microphone into your interface, converts it to USB or Firewire and gets it into the computer. Uh, I happen to like these small ones by Presonus. This is a uh, 26C, Studio 26C. It'll take two different mic inputs. We'll also take a MIDI input from one of my keyboards and we'll convert that microphone signal into something my computer can understand and read. Uh, I can then play that back and connect through the headphones to the audio interface. And one of the really cool things about today's audio interfaces is uh, the, there are some really great packages where you can get an interface, a microphone, a headphones, uh, and a whole bunch of bundled software all in one pack for just a couple hundred bucks. A uh, number of different manufacturers have got different things like that. Presonus has got a couple different packs. And the software that it comes with is not just like garbage throwaway software like you sometimes see bundled with products. This is actually really usable stuff that I'll use every day in my home studio that I actually got for free when I bought this interface. Uh, so really kind of a great way um, to get some added value. One of the reasons why for the interface at least, don't 
don't go out and buy one used because I think the software as an added value to that is really, really useful. And, you know, we'll be three, four, five, six hundred dollars value worth the software. And again, I'm here to tell you, it's not just throwaway stuff. This is actually really good software that I use every day. So the little PreSonus interface, it's a great size. So, so far we've got kind of two compact little things, little interface, little mini keyboard, laptop. So far I'm pretty self-contained. I can take my studio anywhere I go. Uh, I can be on the kitchen table. I can be sitting on a bed in a hotel room be kind of anywhere with this portable equipment. All right, so next in the signal chain is our microphone. So we could do a whole session just on how to mic wind instruments and what's the best microphone for wind instruments. Frankly, the $100 Shure SN58 is a pretty good choice for an all around mic, good one to have around. I've got a couple here in my studio, just you never know when you're gonna need one, a mic, a cable and a microphone stand. And when you buy cables, buy two cables, because if you have one microphone cable, sooner or later, it's going to go on the fritz because somebody rolled a cable over or rolled a card over it or something. Um, get two mic cables because then you've always got a backup. And if you're going to do more than one person recording at a time, always great to have multiple mic stands. Because again, the stands might break. One of the threadings might get, uh, get messed up and you're always kind of scrambling. You don't want to be duct taping mic stands. So always keep three or four mic stands. Uh, in the closet ready to go for that mic. So the Shure SM58 is a great choice. Get a couple of cables, get a couple of mic stands. It's not that expensive. It's probably a, a really good way to always have some stuff ready to go. Uh, and again, for microphones, it's something where you could spend hours and days and months trying to find the perfect mic. Again, we're not here to make records. We're here to get our music onto the computer to have some fun, jam with our friends, record some songs, if we're really gonna get serious about it, we're probably gonna go somewhere, uh, work with a professional who can really do this well. One of the next pieces in the signal chain uh, is a set of headphones. So we're gonna record the music, we're playing it back to the computer. I wanna get some headphones so that I can really critically listen to the music. Uh, and no, in this case, your Apple iPhone headphones are actually not a really good choice. A lot of the consumer headphones are really set up so that the frequency response is geared towards pop music. And I'm not, you know, kind of here making pop music. A lot of it's real bass heavy. I don't get a real clear mid range. And so I'd suggest spending a little bit of extra budget to get some nicer headphones. And these are uh, Sennheisers that I happen to particularly like, and they actually go over your ears. And so I'd encourage you as you're kind of building your ideas for your home studio, if you're a a wind player, the sound of your instrument is actually a really important sound. And a nicer set of headphones will give you just a little bit more clarity uh, on your instrument, especially ones that will go over your ears, not rest on top of your ears, but go over your ears. Uh, absolutely important. These kind of fold up into a nice little package. I think they're about a hundred bucks or so. Uh, spend a little bit of extra budget to get nice headphones because after all your sound uh, is really kind of what it's all about and uh, you know, take, take the time to make sure you get a good sound. One thing you also might consider, if you're a trombone player like me, the headphones don't, aren't very conducive to wearing while you're playing your horn. So if I got my trombone up, the headphones are kind of like right in here. It's not, not very comfortable, to be honest, and I can't really play and wear these headphones. So I actually have a set of smaller in-ear monitors that I'll use if I'm recording trombone. I'll use those. They're also actually really comfortable to listen to. Uh, and if any of you do a lot of gigging outside, you may be playing gigs that use in-ear monitors. That's actually another area where it's worth spending some extra budget to get something really good. Uh, I have some nice ultimate ears. Headphones Weststone makes some really good stuff. Sure makes some good stuff. You can go nuts and get them form fitted to your ear. But that's actually an area where I think is worth spending the extra budget because again, your sound of your instrument, creating your music is really important. So uh, use the good headphones to make sure you can get that good sound. Uh, and important, again, not to just use your iPhone headphones. Uh, you may wanna reference those as, okay, what does this sound like when I'm playing it through my iPhone? Because it's absolutely true. Just like, what is it gonna listen, what is it gonna sound like when I play it through my car stereo? But you wanna start out with as nice a reference as you can. And so that's why I always recommend some nice over ear monitors. You also could um, get some studio monitors. So some bookshelf speakers um, that'll reference as kind of near field monitors, meaning they're closer to you. 
Uh, and one of the things about uh, studio monitors versus say just like home stereo speakers is the frequency response is actually very flat. You wanna hear a very flat response so that you can make any individual adjustments that you want uh, within the sound. And so you wanna hear kind of as, as neutral a palette as you can. Uh, and so a lot of great studio monitors out there, Yamaha makes some great stuff, Presonus makes some great stuff. A uh, lot of good options, you can get small ones, you can get big ones, you can get small ones with a subwoofer, uh, just a lot of great options. Uh, but the combination of some nice headphones and studio monitors, uh, really a good way to go. So one, one question about software that I commonly get asked by people is, well, hey, I, I've got a Mac and it came with GarageBand. Can I just use GarageBand to do this? And, and the answer is yes, of course. But I also say that GarageBand is kind of like my student trombone. I played on that when I was in fifth and sixth grade. And then you know what? I got better. And as I got better, I needed software that was going to work with me as I grew. And so I graduated of sorts to some better software from GarageBand. GarageBand does a lot of great stuff. And, and I love Apple products. It genuinely works all the time. But there's a lot as you want to do fine tuning to your sound and as you want to bring in other sounds and as you want to do more fine tuning and editing that GarageBand just isn't set up to do. And so I'd encourage you to, when you get an interface, get the bundled software with it, use those products. If you just want to lay down some ideas on your phone, GarageBand is perfect for that. But anything beyond that, I try to think about GarageBand as being the student model instrument. And now I'm going to step up to the professional model and use something a little bit more serious. So the last couple of things that I want to reference are actually kind of little handy tips that I learned or little uh, kind of products that actually made my life a whole lot easier. And one of my favorite products uh, actually is something that most musicians would never see. Um, and it's a, a product, I'm gonna grab it right here. This is the, uh, by D'Addario, it's a power base. I think it's called a touring power base. I don't know, it's a, it's a power strip and everybody has these in their house, right? You've got the, the white power strip with the cord that you, wrap around and and i actually I, I love this product for a couple of reasons and and didaria does a lot of great stuff they make great guitar strings uh, great cables if you're a woodwind player you know them because of their reeds uh, every time didario comes out with a product that i think man what's what's the application for this who's really going to use this i looked at this and said you know this is just another power strip who i, I get lots of those at home i don't really need this and, and D'Addario proves me wrong every time. There are a couple of things that this does that are actually really unique. So the first off is the cable actually wraps around the base of this. It has channels built in so you could wrap the cable. So when I'm gigging and I need to slide a power strip into one of my cases, it's this thick, including the cable, and just slides right in the case. I, I love that. That alone is, is unbelievably smart. Uh, folks at D'Addario are so intelligent. It also has then spaces on the power uh, unit for these wall warp power supplies. So my uh, audio interface comes with this honking big power supply. Most power strips, if I'm gonna use this, it's gonna take up two spots, maybe three spots. And so this has it spaced out so that I can um, keep a couple of these wall warp power supplies without taking up uh, the extra space. So this is just a, a really, really handy unit. and the, I think the cord is about, I don't know, six or eight feet, which actually is a little bit longer than most like household power supplies. It's one of those things that you don't think about as being, uh, it's just a power supply. But once you've kind of coiled it and uncoiled it a couple of different times, you realize, you know what? This power supply is actually really, really handy. Uh, and I love it. Every time I think I don't need something that Diderio makes, they, uh, they prove me wrong. The one other thing I don't think I actually have one of these handy, is uh, D'Addario also makes some cable ties. Oh, uh, here, I've got one right here. Some cable ties so that you can keep your microphone cables, your quarter inch cables, your audio cables, cold really nicely. It's like they're, I don't know, six or seven bucks for a 10 pack, uh, wraps around the cable, um, creates this little loop that keeps everything nice and neat. And if you're a kind of somebody who likes to stay organized, this is one of the little tips and tricks uh, that once I got into the habit of always wrapping up my stuff and keeping it nice and orderly, um, I really, really appreciate it. So if you're setting up your home studio, you've got a bunch of cables running everywhere, you've got power supplies, it looks like a mess, get a couple of these D'Addario cable ties and help organize 
neaten up some of your cables. It's a really, really kind of slick way to go. Again, one of those products that you really didn't know that you needed it until you realize, oh, wow, I actually did need this all along. Uh, so again, to kind of recap what we talked about. So if I'm a trombone player, I want to get into home recording. I need to start with a laptop or a desktop is fine. Laptop's great because you can kind of take it anywhere with you you want. Doesn't have to be a super fancy laptop. Enough hard drive space to store all your sounds and software. Uh, even better, maybe if it's an old laptop that you don't have to use anymore and can just use it strictly for music, that's what I do. You need some sort of input device. I really like this uh, small little Akai keyboard. It can go with me anywhere. The black is kind of cool. I mean, what's cooler than black keys on black keys, right? Um, I love that. I also use one of these Novation uh, launch pad keyboards to uh, trigger different loops and samples when I'm practicing. Uh, we'll do another live session about some of the tips and tricks for practicing using your home studio setup uh, over the next couple of days. So I love that as a, as a unit. Um, your, audio, your audio interface, again, this will take your microphone signal because I'm going to play trombone. That's what I got to do. Take it, convert it into sound that your computer can read and understand, can play it back through the headphones, play it back onto speakers, plug in your MIDI keyboard into here. Uh, one of the really important pieces, and again, don't, don't buy a used audio interface. Buy one that's new because you're gonna get a bunch of bundled software with it that's actually really, really cool stuff that I use actually every day in terms of bundled software. You'll need some sort of microphone and stand. A basic Shure SM58 is a great choice. Um, Get a couple of microphone cables and maybe a couple mic stands because sooner or later one's going to break. It's going to wear out right when you need it, right? Um, you'll also want some sort of nice pair of headphones. And again, get something with closed back that will go over your ears. They don't have to be noise canceling, but something that will help block out any of the background noise. Uh, if you're a trombone player, again, this doesn't work real well when I'm holding the trombone. Uh, so I have some in-ear monitors that I like to wear. In fact, I like to mix with those too because... Uh, it's out of the way, the cable's not in the way, um, just very comfortable, helps really block out a lot of the noise. You can get some really good products there. Uh, also, if you've got room, some monitor speakers, uh, they don't have to be too big. Uh, you can be a small size, large size, something to help uh, get your sound out. Uh, and then finally, uh, that D'Addario <laughs> power base cable. Who would have thought that a $30 power strip uh, that I'd be so excited about that. But it's one of those little things that makes your life easier that you didn't realize you needed until you actually had one and said, oh my gosh, I've been missing this all along. We're going to be doing some other uh, sessions here on the Music and Arts Facebook page about home recording for the horn player. Uh, I've got some practice tips and tricks we're going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, some of my other colleagues are going to do some other uh, things on the Music and Arts homepage about some of the exciting new D'Addario reads coming out. Uh, we got a lot of fun stuff planned to help talk about music and how we can take this time while we're uh, heading home here, sheltering in place, and enjoy making some music, sharing it with our friends, uh, and just celebrating the joy of music. So everybody, take care. Uh, post your questions in the comments. We'll be happy to uh, address any of those, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thanks.